And she said, yes, we will get to know each other. And the next scene was in the dream, me in a small room, modernistic, somewhere in the woods, small rain coming down, light rain coming down, a group of 20 to 30 people, and I was giving a seminar to a small group on hunger. And I said to them, in order to taste food again, you have to learn to be hungry again. And then I saw a black woman in the next dream in a black van. She was middle-aged, somewhat corpulent, and around her were some black teens in bandanas listening to her sort of in awe of her because she represented their wisdom, the wisdom they were seeking. They were not finding it in Al Sharpton. They were not finding the wisdom in Barack Obama. They know that they're just self-serving demagogues. The kids know that. You think they're stupid? They were seeking wisdom, and they had to go to a black woman to find the wisdom in this dream. And here's what she said to them, as clear as a bell. I'll repeat it to you on this radio program. This woman in my dreams, this black woman in my dreams said to the young boy, she said, America is a deep country, and you must find forgiveness in yourselves to find the deepness in this great nation. It was a profound dream for me. I have many dreams. Some I remember, some I don't. I've taught myself dream therapy for many many decades I taught it to my children we often talked about their dreams over the breakfast table for years we did that because I had studied dream analysis of the type done by certain Native American tribes for whom dreams are very important and symbolism is very important and I don't think that we're so detached from the Native Americans in that we live on their land and their souls bark at us on this land and they hearken to us on this land and they beckon to us on this land they speak to us on this land. The Native Americans who have been on the continent for over 20,000 years uh, who are still here as are their ancestors. So I think that we're all reflections of all of these things. We're not simply two-dimensional figures walking around on a landscape, clothing ourselves and stuffing ourselves and drinking ourselves and fornicating ourselves, whatever we do. No, I think they were far more complex than that. But the message of this radio show is quite simple. Forgiveness. The white owl says forgiveness. We have a president who has no forgiveness in his soul. He practices a, an enmity I've never seen in the presidency. A dera it's almost a deranged enmity. It makes you wonder if he's all whole of mind. Savage. I don't want to talk about these topics. I'm sick of it all. I'm sick of Baltimore. I'm sick of the white liberals who caused it. I'm sick of the thugs in the street who burnt it. You know, I feel like I'm getting a migraine from all of this. I'm going to talk business. I have to, like, incite you to talk. But I'm not going to just incite you. I don't want to incite you. Many of you are angry over what Obama's done uh, by laying the groundwork for those riots over the last six years. We know what he did. We know what Holder did. We know how they deballed the police. We know what's going on. Now, in the midst of all this, now we have to start talking about redefining marriage. Everything in our lives has to be torn to shreds by the radical left. It's how a revolution functions. Don't you get that? What they want to do is redefine not just marriage, but society itself. You don't understand this as more than marriage. It has much more to do with redefining the entire society. It's the same type of people who want to disarm the police, who want to disarm marriage. Do you understand what I just said to you? Well, that's my opinion. So let's go back to gay weddings. That's all anyone wants to talk about. That's what you want to talk about, nothing else. It's a good topic. We'll revisit it. So let us begin with the actual voices involved, with Antonin Scalia. The man robbing toilet paper would not have known who he is. He would have think he was some Italian who ran Baltimore in the 50s. But no, Antonin Scalia is on the U.S. Supreme Court, and he's arguing with a woman named Bonato. It's Italian versus Italian. Antonin Scully is the conservative. Ms. Bonato is the gay arguer, the arguer for the gay marriages. So Scalia asked Bonato the following. Let's hear clip one. Do you agree that, uh, that, that uh, ministers will not have to conduct same-sex marriages? That's, if they do not want to, that is correct. I believe that is firm under the First Amendment. She believes. Notice she's a snake like all lawyers. I believe it's part of the First Amendment. Well, listen, Ms. Bonato, if it's part of the First Amendment, then why are your cohorts harassing pizza shop owners and bakeries to make cakes for gays when they don't want to? Isn't that part of their First Amendment, Ms. Bonato? You're clean and nice in front of the Supreme Court now. You're wearing a nice press skirt 
and you're a Miss Curtsy and Miss Miss This, yeah, First Amendment. You know you don't believe in the First Amendment. You believe in the Gay Amendment, which is do it our way or go to the highway. Don't tell us you believe in the First Amendment. Then Scalia goes on about clergy in clip two. Listen to this. But ministers who, who do not believe in, in same-sex marriage will still be authorized to conduct marriages on behalf of the state. You can't do that once it is a constitutional prescription. No answer to that. Right, of course. Once it's a constitutional prescription, then the ministers can't perform any marriage unless they perform gay marriages as well as straight marriages. I guess you can't say straight marriage anymore. That's sort of a slur. Uh, you have to use same sex op. I never heard of it. Like if I, if I, my, both my parents deceased a long time ago. If I said to them, "You know that you you were an opposite sex couple," they would have looked at me like like I was crazy. Who ever heard of a redefinition of this in your lifetime? Your mother and father were an opposite sex couple. You hear this? They had to redefine themselves for less than one percent of the population. Oh yeah, yeah. Your grandmother, grandfather, going back a million years, they were they were opposite sex couples. Let's say five thousand years. So then Varelli, whoever he is, I guess he's another one arguing for uh, the other side. We, I mean, I have to be fair to the subject. Let's hear clip three now. The opportunity to marry is integral to human dignity. Excluding gay and lesbian couples from marriage demeans the dignity of these couples. It demeans their children, and it denies the, the, both the couples and their children the stabilizing structure that marriage affords. All of a sudden, marriage. I knew gay people. None of them ever wanted to be married. It's the furthest thing from their mind. The last thing the gay people I knew wanted was marriage. They entered that lifestyle to get away from the conventional life that their parents had because they, they couldn't stand it. It was stifling them. Now, I know things were different then. I get it. It's different now. I get it. I understand that. It's a different time. Now suddenly marriage is the most important thing in the world to the gay community. Are you kidding me? Do you really think this is about marriage? We discussed it yesterday. If it's about property rights, visitation rights, that could be done very simply without redefining marriage for the entire universe. Domestic partnerships or by legal decree, period, end of story. It has nothing to do with marriage. It has to do with changing society at its core. The building block of any society is man and woman. I don't care if you're a Syrian. I don't care if you're a Libyan. I don't care if you're a lesbian. I don't care if you're a Staten Islander. The building block of any society is man and woman. Everybody knows that. Gays know that. They came from man and woman. So why do they have to change the structure of the world to reflect their own view of the world? Because they can. Because they control the media. That's why. Now we go on. I'm going to roll here. How many people hate me now? I don't know. I'm not trying to be hated. I am trying to have a discussion here. Let's have one more, which is from Mr. Roberts who was the man who gave us Obamacare, strangely. Nobody knows why he did that. He was the one who suddenly said it's a tax. It's not a tax. Therefore, it's Obamacare. Yes, you can have Castro care in America. So here's Justice Roberts now in clip four. Um, every definition that I looked up prior to about a dozen years ago defined marriage as unity between a man and a woman as husband and wife. Uh, obviously, if you succeed, that core definition will no longer be operable. Then Alito asks, what will be the limits on same-sex marriages? Okay, clip five. It's a good one. Listen to this one. Suppose we rule in your favor in this case, and then after that, a group consisting of two men and two women apply for a marriage license. Would there be any ground for denying them the license? That's all. Polygamy is coming. Polygamy next. Marry a horse next. Want to marry a dog? Sure. Why not marry a dog? A nice furry creature doesn't bother anybody. Isn't your dog entitled to marriage too? Tell me why, if you change the name, uh, the definition of the word marriage, you, you cannot marry an animal. Tell me why. Explain that to me. How? How will it be limited? Is that a constitutional right to marry your cat or your dog? Now, I'm not comparing gays to cats and dogs. Please don't l lump the two together and make s something out of what I'm not saying. Don't try to do it. It's too late in my career. It's not going to work. You and George Soros and the rats who evade taxes and attack conservatives, you know what? You lost. You didn't win. So the fact of the matter is keep trying that you're not going to get me. I'm too smart for you, number one, and I'm not what you say I am, number two. And the best defense, by the way, for an attack is the truth. So don't try to lump me in with uh, the bigots because I'm the last thing on earth. The last thing on earth I am is a bigot. 
I am Michael Savage. I am a sexual libertarian. Meanwhile, all the nation is in, in, in a state of uh, emotional collapse. Everyone's against everyone else. So it's not bad enough the Islamo-fascists are hunting us. It's not bad enough that our intelligence agencies have been penetrated and are weakened and are not doing their job. It's not bad enough that we're almost at the verge of war with Russia because of Obama and Hillary Clinton. It's not bad enough that Israel could be nuked if uh, John Kerry, the anti-American, is permitted to sign the so-called nuclear deal. No, now we have to focus on redefining the most fundamental building block of a society, marriage. So let's talk about it. Since that's what the Supreme Court is doing, that's what we the people are going to be doing. Too. I don't think everything is what it appears to be. And I think there are other dimensions to reality. I always have known that my whole life. We all do. We seem to think that we're two-dimensional creatures, sometimes maybe three-dimensional creatures. But sometimes I think we're multidimensional creatures. And I believe that there's more to, the, to any picture that meets the eye, including why Islam is on the rise, why the West is falling, and why America, in the midst of all of this, is obsessed with a situation such as gay marriage. I believe that there's a spiritual element to this entire picture that we can touch on if you want. How about the Baltimore riots? What would the spiritual element of that be? Why is that happening again? Why is it suddenly 1968? Why do we have minority mayors who tell the police to not, to not fight back against the rioters? And they only stop the rioters, only stop when the National Guard came out and had guns in their hands. Why are communists in New York City who have nothing to do, kids from the colleges who have nothing to do, usually kids from middle class houses, especially those radical girls, running around with knapsacks all over all over New York, trying to burn things down, attacking police. Why? Why are they permitted to run rampant in the streets? Why? What's the spiritual meaning of all of this? Well, there's a lot of simple answer to it all, and then there's a complex answer to all, and then, of course, there's no answer to it. I'd rather talk about the no answer. We're supposed to believe we're living in progressive times. We're supposed to believe that we're living in times that are advanced, I would argue the opposite. My contemporary insights would tell me something else. And I, I try to tell you this whole argument of gay marriage, for one moment, just remove the word gay and marriage from what I'm about to say and go back to my analogy of Jacob's Ladder because I want to do the mystical thing for one minute. What is Jacob's Ladder? Sulam Yaakov is a staircase to heaven that the biblical patriarch Jacob dreams about during his flight from his brother Esau. It is described in the book of Genesis. He dreamed. He lay, he lay his head on a rock, if you read Genesis, and he put the rock under his head, and he dreamed of a staircase to heaven. And he woke up, and there was a lattice set up on the earth. And the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Now, Christians believe Jesus is the staircase to heaven. Muslims believe in this concept of a staircase to heaven. Islam, in fact, in, in, in legitimate Islam, before the maniacs stole the religion, Jacob is revered in Islam as a prophet and patriarch. And legitimate Muslim scholars draw a parallel with Jacob's vision of the latter in Muhammad's event of Mirage. So what am I trying to say to you is that for one minute, change your view of everything and understand we just take the metaphor of Jacob's ladder, a staircase to heaven. And the mystics would argue, for example, that if you change the order of the rungs, you can destroy everything. If you pervert or confuse the rungs on Jacob's ladder, all of our troubles can be seen for what they are. I want to shift though to something entirely different. We're living in interesting times where each man literally has to save himself. We have no authority figures to believe in. We have no government to believe in. That's why I wrote Government Zero, and it's not an infomercial. Government Zero. No borders, no language, no culture. The book is on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com. And I made a commitment, which I should repeat right now. All of the royalties that I make on that book, and I'll repeat it again, write it down. Any and all royalties I make on that book will be given to my Savage Scholarship Fund for deserving college students going forward 
that will be one of the things I leave as my legacy after my radio career. I'll be right back. Savage.